Hello, hello, welcome back to Portugal and to another Ask video where we've had a surprising number of questions about this, about these concrete posts, this uh, trellis path as we call it, that runs from the house all the way past the veg garden down to where the chicken coop is located. We always find it interesting the kind of things that people want to know more about or have questions about. And I guess because this is a bit of a feature of the land or it really kind of stands out, you see it in a lot of videos, uh, I guess that's why people want to know a little bit more about it. What it is, what's planted on it, what we're going to do with it in the future and all that kind of stuff. And we'll start here with this, but we've also got a few other things to show you and talk about, all related to the subject of kind of landscaping and some of our future plans for how things are eventually going to look around here in some time. But let's go and find Kylie and talk about these lovely looking concrete posts. Morning. You are far away. Just looking at our very ruined wall here. Oh yes, and our very ruined compost bay. Yes, that's not quite. <laughs> <laughs> so, talk to me about the, the path, the trellising, the posts. Oh, I have some grand plans for making them look much more attractive. The whole thing. So I think in the past, you can see concrete posts and they have rebar in them. Um, so they're very, very sturdy. And then they have these wires on the top and on the sides. And they have some remnants of old vines that are not in very good condition anymore. So I think they used to use it oops, for, for vines going over. And there's, if you just come this way. This is an excellent example of how it would have been a long time ago. Lots and lots of these. Um, yeah, this one is super old. You can see how thick the, yeah. the kind of main trunk is. And it's the only really one that's remaining that's in any decent condition. But it does make us feel like we should try and restore it back to how it was. So what I would like to do is keep all the posts, maybe put some timber slats yeah, down slats. rather than the wire on one side and do replace all the wires with some new wires because they're all rusty and and, and they're very, saggy and yeah very so good. not too, too sure what we would replace them with but something and then reinstate some vines along this side but also interplant with some passion fruit some kiwi fruit any other kind of vining fruit vines that we would like to eat maybe some wisteria or something pretty on the other side we have this really deteriorating um, brick wall. Yeah, it's kind of like a retaining wall with a step down yeah. to the garden. So the plan there is to rebuild this entire wall. So reclaim all the stone that's in there. But what I want to do is use all of our rubble from our rubble pile to make a, a short wall that we can render so all the rubble gets hidden in it. And by rubble, I mean all the big pieces of cement and And lime and, and red yeah, brick. Yeah, all the... Yeah bigger chunkier pieces that we can use as bricks um, render over that and then just cap it with a piece of stone so it ends up being like a nice ledge with the stone exposed and what kind of height from the ground are we thinking quite low right so i want it to come up probably to here maybe okay leg. like like shin height then yeah. yeah and the reason for that is then on this side in the middle we can actually lay probably wood chip something else organic just so we don't have to stream in here and then on the far side where the vines are going to be put a flower bed so that this is actually like a corridor and I really would like to put some fairy lights down here to make it look all pretty <laughs> <laughs> and then on this side on the other side of the, of the brick wall on the ground down in the garden bed is to have a beneficial hedgerow. So that's where probably all of my flowers will go down in there. We'll put the tobacco back in there. So calendula, all of the, all the things that are bee friendly will go in this hedgerow. And I'm not too sure where, I think, I think we said maybe here. Yeah, we'll I think here. We'll put a little staircase down. Yeah. And there will obviously be stairs at the end, which are already there and maybe another staircase a little bit further along depending how useful that is we definitely need something here because often we come from over there and want to get down and it's a bit of a pain so so yeah think about a a canopied 
archway with vines and fruit and then flowers on this side. And then all of this area over here uh, is going to be barked eventually going down to the, the small kaffir lime tree down there just to kind of uh, make this a bit more landscaped. There'll be some more raised beds down there as well and then yeah all of this will be barked as well for the beneficial hedgerow and eventually the garden will expand that way a bit as well. So that's some of the plans for this trellis here, the path that goes all the way down to the middle of the garden. But we do have some others as well. Let's go and take a look at those. So I'm standing at the bottom of the steps to the house. And again, along here, we have these similar concrete posts, different style. These are the ones that just go up and then have an angle. They did have wires in them. And I imagine they originally had vines as well. There are still some vines, yeah. One down there and there's one over there, but the rest have died off. So we will reinstate these. Again, they're not attractive, but they're really, really functional. They're really sturdy. So we've got to come up with a way of making them a little bit more aesthetically pleasing and blending into the landscape a bit. Uh, and so our plan is along here on the garden side to plant blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, and have them kind of grow up the trellis a little bit. Um, but we will keep them there because they're there. Yeah, no need to remove something just for the sake of it. Exactly. We'll, we'll, we'll make it look nice. Exactly. So the other bit of trellising that you've probably seen a few times, if you've watched any of our videos before, is this, down by the side of the house. And the trellis in this case is kind of flimsy, it's made of metal, it really doesn't look very nice, and it's not very supportive of the, uh, the plants that are growing here. In the garden beds in front, there are some roses and some other flowers, which are quite nice. They kind of come out at different times of year. But then there are some old vines that grow up and over this kind of kind of like a pergola or an arbor type structure. Again, it's a bit rickety at the moment and the vines are very old and not producing that well. Although we did get some grapes from them this year. But the plan in this case is to completely rebuild this structure out of some nice thick chunky timber and put a big header piece that goes all the way along the, uh, the house and then connects over with kind of like rafters, classic pergola kind of style. And we'll keep the old vines, but we'll interplant with some new ones so that we can then transition them from the old to the new when they start producing grapes in the future. So the one change that we will make is we're going to put a staircase down into this path. Because we've had to lower the ground down there, it feels very, very corridory as we walk through there. So we want to open this up a little bit, have a long staircase here and then down there because we have had to take the height down we need to build a secondary retaining wall in front of this retaining wall probably only needs to be like this high but where we've come down the, the existing stone wall just sits on earth so we need to put a little retaining wall in front of that so we'll do that and incorporate a staircase so that we can walk from our kitchen to kind of up into this lovely citrus grove and also it will bring more light in down there because we'll lower this section here. Yeah, and it will end up being quite wide, almost like three meters or something uh, in terms of the, the wide opening here. And then it will get narrower as we come up into the garden. Yep. But that's many years away. Uh, yes. <laughs> we might, so our current plan is to get the downstairs comfortable and to get the bathroom done. And then we might go and do some landscaping and get this sorted because it would make it feel so much nicer for us to be able to step out of the ground floor into a much nicer environment rather than continually stepping over our moat. And we really do want to get that sorted, but that's at least a year away. So that's that for the trellising, but we have something else interesting to show you, but we need to go and get it. So we brewed beer or I brewed beer on my day off. This is the first one that we did, and it is a kind of like a Guinness-like stout, an Irish stout or a dry stout. It's about 4.2%, and it is a little bit overcarbonated because I did my math wrong and I put too much sugar in the bottles, but it's very, very tasty indeed. This one is the second batch that I did. It's a completely different style. It's a pale ale, and it's got some dried orange zest from some of our fruit in it. And this one is a little bit undercarbonated, even though I thought I did my math right, but uh, maybe not. It's a bit cloudy because I'm still working on my process, but I made beer and it's very exciting. <laughs> so I did used to drink Guinness when I was living in Ireland for a while, and I don't mind Guinness. It's definitely better than lager. 
And that is quite tasty, a little bit fizzy, but that's close to a Guinness or a stout. It is a stout. It is, yes. So this actually really improves once you leave it for a bit after opening the bottle because the carbonation kind of calms down a little bit. And I think it's got a really interesting flavor profile. It's, it's definitely got a nice amount of bitterness. There's some kind of coffee and chocolate and caramel notes in there. And I'm really, really pleased with this. The fact that this was my first one, I think then has propelled me into this home brewing hobby because if the first one was a bit crap, I'd be like, mm, that was a lot of effort for something that's not very nice, but it was a lot of effort, but it's really, really tasty. I'm not loving the color of this. Yeah, it's too cloudy it's... because my my system isn't yeah, isn't looks, great at the moment. It looks kind of dirty dishwaterish. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm not really tasting any citrus there. I can't taste the orange. Yeah, not for me. Yeah, I agree. I think this one is a bit underwhelming. There is a bit of citrusy notes from the hops, although there's not many hops in it, and it's just one variety. Uh, East Kent Goldings, I think it is. And it's a bit flat because of the carbonation. And yeah, there's not many, not many layers to it. It's a very simple beer. It's a single malt and it's a single hop, East Kent Goldings. And yeah, there's, there's not really much to it. It tastes a bit thin and a bit watery. It may just be the recipe is not great. So lots more experimentation is required, <laughs> but it is quite drinkable. And so, you know, that's no bad thing. And I've done all of these off camera just while I'm learning and kind of getting the process dialed in. I've got some fairly basic equipment at the moment. In the future, I might upgrade to something a little bit more semi-professional shall we say but regardless i'm still enjoying uh, doing all of this kind of stuff and i think we're going to do a video in the near future and we're going to make a sour beer using some of the grapes that we harvested this year because i really like fruity sour beers and kylie does too that's definitely more of her preference than the kind of bitter or lagery type styles so if you're into that kind of stuff that will be coming in the near future so i think we'll wrap it up there for now thank you for watching we'll see you in the next video bye for now bye bye so it's not all bad, right? Hmm. This is my lunchtime beer. <laughs>